In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, brothers and sisters, to this uh, 22nd Sunday on the ordinary time. We are celebrating this, this Sunday in which the Lord gives us this, uh, this word. That talks about this, uh, the cross, the scandal of the cross. The cross is that all, we all have to carry on, we all have to bear in order to obtain life. But before we do this, uh, uh, this little celebration, let us uh, ask the Lord for His Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this day, we give you thanks for this Sunday, we ask you Lord, that you may give us the strength to follow you, to go after you, not to listen to the devil, to Satan, to what the humans think, but to think according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer greatly from the elders, the chief priests, the scribes, and be killed on the third day be raised. Then Peter took Jesus aside and began to rebuke him. God forbid, Lord, no such thing shall ever happen to you. He turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are an obstacle to me. You are thinking not as God does, but as human beings do. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wishes to come after me must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. What profit will there be for one to gain the whole world and forfeit his life? Or what can one give in exchange for his life? For the Son of Man will come with his angels in his Father's glory, and then he will repay all according to his conduct. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Lord Jesus Christ. So, brothers and sisters, the Lord gave us this um, Gospel this Sunday, and the Lord is talking about uh, two things. How God thinks and how human beings think. When um, Peter listened to this uh, news that the Messiah, that the Lord Jesus Christ has to suffer under the scribes, the Pharisees, and then after uh, being killed, and then after he will be raised to life, Peter didn't accept this. He didn't want this for this great Savior, for this great Messiah, for this great King. And when he listened to these words of Jesus Christ, he didn't say anything openly to everybody, no. He took aside Jesus Christ from out of the twelve apostles, out of the disciples, and he started to talk to him one by one, alone. And he said, Lord, this is not going to happen to you. In this, Jesus Christ recognized that somehow, Satan, the devil, was using this man, Peter, to talk to him. It is not that Peter was Satan, it is not that Peter was uh, possessed by any demon or anything, but the devil also uses people to talk to you in different ways. But not only people, he also uses your reason, your thinking, to tell you things that are not according to to the will of God. And Jesus Christ told to Peter, no, Peter, you are thinking not as God does. You are thinking as human beings, as human beings do. No? How is a human being thinking? You know that Satan, the devil, is not the, uh, this awful demon or creature who is always with the sword or the peers trying to kill us. No. At the beginning, Lucifer was the most beautiful angel. He was the most uh, intelligent angel that uh, God created. He was beautiful, intelligent, and he has a lot to think. He has a very good reason. And sometimes the devil enters into us and he starts to talk to us in the same way, using our reason. How the devil talks to us, how the devil 
try to convince us no? how human beings think. First of all, he says, why you are accepting the history that you have? Why you have to accept that you are married to that wife? Why you have to accept your, you are married to that husband? Why do you have to accept your children? No, you are better than that plan that happened to you. You could do better. You could have another wife, you could have another husband who treats you better, you could have another kids better than these ones. Why you have to accept all these things? Rebel, do something. No? And somehow, by listening to the devil, we say, it is true, this is what is right. There should be a better life for me. I should have a better life in here. I give everything in this life. I work hard. I do many things, but at the end, I'm not getting anything. I should do something else. I should go against everything that the church and the people and the priests are telling me. I will do my own life. And this is how the devil enters into our reasoning, reasoning and reasoning. That's why Jesus Christ says, Peter, you're thinking not as God thinks, but as human beings. What's the other way in which uh, the devil enters into us and he starts to reasoning uh, about our lives? It's always the problem with money. No? Why do you have to accept that you are poor? You should have better things. You should have a better job. You should have a better house, a better car. You should have many, many other comforts in your life. Why you have to be in precarity, you know? to be in a precarious life, to have uh, just enough to meet the ends at the end of the month, just to have enough to feed your family, just to have enough to survive. Why this happened to me? No. Why the devil is telling you, get more? If uh, the problem is money, get more money. How do you get money? Uh, you can steal, you can go and ask and don't give it back. You could do many things for money. And this is how the devil talks to us. And at the end, we say, yeah, it's right. We need more money. Our life depends on money. And we try to do our best to find any means to find more money. And not only money, but also comfort, uh, affections, securities, and all these kind of things. And at the end, the Lord also tells you that, the devil tells you, why do you have to be in the church? Why do you have to follow this will of God? Rebel. The church, God, is telling you that you should uh, do this, you should do that. No. Change it. You have to change it. No. What is that about the cross? Why you have to bear that big cross that is your husband, who always gets drunk? Why you have to take care of, take, uh, to take your cross that is your wife, who is always... Uh, nagging at you, who is always uh, complaining about you. Why you have to take that cross that are your children, that they are going in a bad life and you cannot do anything? Why you have to take all these crosses? No. That's the scandal of the cross, brothers and sisters. No. The cross is not something that we have to, as a masochist, to put it in our shoulders and just carry out of... Uh, heroism, out of, out of uh, stoicism. No. There is a reward when we carry our cross. There is a, there is a price. You know? But it's true that we have to suffer in the cross. That's why Jesus Christ at the end of the Gospel says, whoever wants to come after me, you should take up your cross, deny yourself and follow me. Because whoever tries to find his life in this world will lose it. But whoever loses his life in this world will gain it. So there is, there is a promise, there is a gain when you carry your cross. The, the cross of your husband, your wife, you will see that maybe at the end of 25 years your, your marriage will be beautiful, it will change. Maybe that cross that is awful for you, that is your marriage, you will see the fruits in your grandchildren. How much do you love your grandchildren? It's beautiful, a treasure that you have. And the Lord is giving you that treasure, that things that we, we don't like it sometimes, that those crosses that we have in our lives, are the most beautiful things that we have. Even if you cannot accept your father as he is, even if you cannot accept your mother or your sister, those crosses 
then after they become glorious, there is, there is a price for that. Whenever you, you find reconciliation with your father, your mother is like heaven open. And it doesn't matter if you have money, if you don't have money, you have a better life, you have a house, you have a car, it doesn't matter. There are beautiful things when you carry your cross and it becomes glorious. Heaven opens for you. There is a price. It's not that we have to suffer all the time with our crosses just to carry for the sake of masochism. No, there is a price. That's why the Lord is always telling us, if you want to gain that Christ, if you want to gain that life, if you want to have really a happiness, if you want to really have this peace, take up your cross. It's not that I want to kill you. It's not that I, I want you to die as I die. No, I want you to have life. Because at the end, we are all looking for life. Where do you find life? You find life in money, just for a while. You find life in in love and the affection of other people, maybe for just a few minutes, and then after you are empty. We are always looking for life. And the Lord is giving us the key, He's giving us the key to enter into this life, and it's the cross. And one thing more, you know, whenever we don't carry our crosses, we fall into sin. There, there is, the two things are together. If you are on the cross, you don't sin. But if you fall down from the cross, you sin. There is no such thing as, oh no, I'm going to be okay without God and I'm not going to sin. There is no such thing. Either you are with God on the cross or you are on your sins. There is no other way around, brothers and sisters. Whenever we fall down from the cross, we fall into sin. That is also very important to carry our cross because the cross gives us the graces not to fall into sin. And it is true what the gospel says at the end. We are not going to be judged according of what we have seen, what we have done, all the evil that we have done. It is true. The Lord is going to, is mercy. He has, he has given us the sacraments of penance, the Eucharist for the forgiveness of our sins. But at the end, he said, at the end of the time, my Father will come in his glory. And then he will repay everyone according to his conduct. What is the conduct that he's going to judge us according to if you have carried on your cross or not? This is the simple judgment. Are you on the cross or you're not? If you're on the cross, you go with the Lord. If you are not in the cross, you go somewhere else. So, cars, brothers and sisters, let us ask for this grace really to carry our crosses in our lives to carry all the crosses that we have uh, in our families, and in our homes, at work, and, every, and everywhere else. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for this uh, word that we have received. We ask you, Lord, that you may give us the graces to carry this cross in our lives, that you may give us the consolation also in all the sufferings that we go through, in all the precarities that we have, in all our histories that we live, and in, um, in all the crosses that we have every day. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to all of you, brothers and sisters, have a good Sunday.